in the heart of South Africa's Eastern Cape lies a farm called Witmoskloof, nestled between the mountains and home to a wide variety of animals. Two years ago I came out to this farm with a good friend of mine and hunted dussies with a 2.2 rimfire and a 177 Air Arms S510. The hunt was a huge success and so in June 2016 I decided to come out to the farm once again, this time with the FX Impact, an air gun that I've had some incredible success with in recent times. Upon arrival at the farm we are greeted with some rather sketchy weather. The wind is gusting quite a bit and the dark skies are looking pretty ominous but we determined not to waste any daylight so we set up below a promising looking cliff and scan for movement. A dusty appears right on top of the cliff about 80 meters off and I set up for the shot. Yep. Nice pre. So that was an 82 meter shot and I was sitting down kind of resting my elbow on my knee with the impact. I held about two mil dots over because we had quite a steep incline here. It's probably about 25 or 30 degrees. Um, and held off about a mil dot or a mil dot and a half to the right for a wind. And just heard quite a solid thud, so he went straight down. Happy with that. Not long afterwards, another dusty appears in pretty much exactly the same spot. And this time, I let a friend of mine take the shot. Right, this is Luke. Uh, Luke's joining me on this trip. He's going to be alternating with me. We're both going to kind of take turns with the gun, shooting at the dussies. Uh, Luke just took his, his first dussie now. Probably about the same distance as, as me, about 80 meters or so. Um, as I said, at this angle, you just aim, you know, one or two mil dots above him, and um, the pellet carries really well without dropping. So, it's the first dussie, yeah. Luke. How do you My feel? My first dussie with the air gun. Well, with anything. So, it was great to have it with the air gun, especially this. Impact, as you can see, just dropped him on the spot. It was great. If you've seen any of my other dusty hunting videos, you'll know that they are animals that live amongst the rocks. And that's one of the main reasons we've chosen to hunt in this particular spot. The valley that we're in is very steep and rocky, so there must be hundreds of dussies living here. It's just a matter of waiting for them to appear. It's not long until that happens, and soon I have my sight set on dussy number three. It's a good shot, right in the head, and he definitely doesn't know what's hit him. With the rain clouds moving in closer, we decide to take one last shot for the day. This one's from about 40 meters out. Yeah. I'm so happy with that day, oh my goodness. Again, I didn't have a, a very sturdy rest. I've got the bipod on here, but um, it's not so easy to lie down on these sharp rocks. So I just kind of kneeled down, again, put my elbow on my knee and took a shot like that. And he was hit very well hidden um, in a bush down there amongst the rocks. I could struggle to find him, but um, when I did get the crosses on him, I aimed a little bit low because of the, again, because of the angle and just watched him drop on the spot with a loud thud. So I'm very happy with that. Let's go collect him. Of course we had to retrieve everything we shot and that in itself can be quite scary in this terrain but there's quite a lot of meat on these animals so we definitely don't want to let anything go to waste. Right I bet you didn't know this but the closest re living relative to the dassie is actually the African elephant and if you look at this animal quite closely, if you look at the dental structure, you'll see that uh, the dassie's teeth are actually very similar to the elephant. They even have small tusks, although they're only really really short, you can see that they're actually tusks and not teeth. Very very interesting, um, but let me just explain the reason why we're actually shooting these animals because I obviously don't want you to think that we're just coming out here and shooting for sport. Um, number one, they actually compete with the, the livestock here for food. Um, there are a lot of game animals on this farm and a lot of sheep on this farm. Um, and five dussies, if you put five dussies together, they actually consume as much as a fully grown sheep. So a few of these aren't a problem, but if you've got a heck of a lot on the farm, they actually start competing with your livestock. And so every now and again, we generally like to come out here and thin out their numbers just a little bit. Um, another thing you may not know about them is that they like to eat a plant called speckworm. Um, speckworm is one of the most important plants in many game animals diets. A lot of animals that are browsers that eat bushes 
um, need nutrients um, because this place is so dry and they get a lot of their nutrients from the speck boom tree these dussies love the speck boom tree and so they're competing with the the game animals as well and that's why we we shoot them as well so that's our first dussie down um, it is starting to to rain now so i think we're gonna kind of pack up and leave for the next few hours but as soon as the rain clears we keen to head out here again and do some more shooting i'll see you then the next morning we awake to some absolutely beautiful weather there's still a bit of wind to deal with but the sun is shining and that's a really good sign dussies like to sun themselves on the rocks especially in the winter when the holes in the rocks can get very cold there are many potential hunting spots to explore so we climb on the back of the truck and begin our search we decide to park off on the side of the road and move towards the rocks on foot so that we don't scare the dussies off. We scan the rocks all around for movement and don't see anything for quite some time, but despite this, there are signs all around that confirm that we're in a good location. Well, what comes in has to go out, and um, if you look at the amount of droppings all over this road, um, you get an idea of how much these animals actually eat. You don't think that they eat a lot because they're quite small, but there are a lot of them on this property. And I have a feeling that they probably cross this road quite a lot. There's rocks up there and there's a whole lot of rocks down here, heading down into the, into the valley. So they probably kind of have to cross this road quite a lot to get between their holes. Yeah, a lot of droppings, which means a lot of dussies, which means a lot of shooting. So let's get back to work. <laughs> This morning we've decided to bring Anton with us to help us find some animals. Anton is the boy on the right, he grew up on this farm and he knows this place like the back of his hand. He tells us to focus on the rocks that have rolled down the valley and he's absolutely right. Before we know it we have our first dussie of the day. I just shot a Dussie down there, nice and close, probably about 20 meters or so. Um, I think I got him in the head because he dropped straight down. So I'm just going to put the gun down and go fetch him. Right, well, the wind has picked up a lot. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but it's really, really blowing now. Um, so basically any shots over 50 meters are going to be extremely, extremely difficult to get. I do have that, that weather flow wind meter. But the wind is gusting so much that it's almost pointless trying to... Ah, there's a dussie here. Kudu bull. This is our guide Anton. He's going to be helping us to find animals today. He's just spotted a kudu bull, so we're going to go check him out and maybe film him a little bit. It's always such a treat to see animals like this. Whether you're hunting them or not, there's something so majestic about the kudu and when you see them up close, it really just takes your breath away. This property has a wide variety of game and so if you spend some time here, you're bound to see some interesting animals. We've had a decent start to the morning but we decide to move on to another spot. The sun is starting to bake down now and we're quite confident that we can bag a few more dussies if we just keep moving. While driving, we spot some movement across the valley, so I tell the driver to stop and I set up for the shot. This one's a long way off at over 100 meters, but I've done the maths, I'm in a comfortable shooting position, and the impact does the rest. There's another one, there's another. There's another one. Okay. Moving over. That was 101 meters on a dussie. He's looking straight at me. I got him just here in the span and he kind of just dropped down at the back there. So 100 meters with this gun. Um, and all I did was I basically ranged him with the range finder and then I've got all my holdover values here and I used the 15 degree angle number um, at 10x magnification and he dropped straight down. So. Gun's done its job once again. <laughs> I'm absolutely amazed at what this gun can do, even in the wind like this. Um, we've got this right over here, the weather flow wind meter. Um, you put it in the phone, it spins, and it puts straight into the 
to an app on my phone it tells me what I need to hold for the wind so it's almost too easy it's just a matter of pulling the trigger Luke spots a head peeking out from behind a rock a long way off so I hand him the impact he sets up in a prone position and he absolutely nails the shot yeah Luke is a very experienced shooter. In fact, he probably knows more than me about ballistics. So I shouldn't have been surprised that he hit it, but nevertheless, it was a bit of a shock to the system to see him pull it off so well. Oh my goodness. So Luke just put in the ultimate shot, something I don't think I'd be able to do. Luke, Luke just shot a Dassey at 144 meters with, with the air gun. Um, we waited for the wind to calm down he held, I think, two or three mil dots for the wind, and I think 7.4 or 8 mil dots uh, for the drop. Took the shot, and we all heard this solid thud. It's an unmistakable sound. That means it's, he hit the dassey, and it hasn't appeared again. So I think he put in a really good shot in it. That is absolutely insane. 144 meters. What the heck? I think we're going to have to call it a day there, because I know I can't outdo that. <laughs> nice. Well, I said we might call it a day there, but we're having so much fun that we decide to try just one more spot out. So it's back on the truck and eventually we get into a stunning valley that sheltered very well from the wind. There's another rock face just off to the side of the road. So again, it's just a matter of parking off, setting up on the back of the truck and waiting patiently. This one is hit right in the lower neck. It's a good ethical shot and he doesn't go anywhere. We move the truck about 50 meters forward so we can see the rocks from a different angle and this time I decide to fit the scope cam to the rifle once again so that you can see the shots from my perspective. Go for it. Go for it. This one is a beautiful shot and when you look at it in slow motion you can see why he dropped so quickly. The pellet impacts right in the chest, passing through the vitals before breaking the spine. Hot shots by themselves, although very effective, usually take a few seconds to kill these animals, which is a problem because they are able to run down their holes. A shot to the spine is ideal because it kills them on the spot. Shot placement is extremely important when hunting these animals as they are very tough, but if your placement is good, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. For some reason, the Dassies at this spot seemed a bit slow to figure out that they were in danger and when another one pops up, I take the opportunity. This one is a perfect headshot right in the forehead and he doesn't even move an inch. One of the best things about hunting in beautiful locations is that even when the animals you're hunting don't show themselves for a while, there's always something to see. This Cape Robin chat appeared right next to us and we were able to film it for quite a while, which was a real bonus. The hunting regulations in South Africa state that each person is only allowed to shoot five dassies per day. So at this point, I hand the impact over to Luke and shortly afterwards he gets his opportunity. Fast. How was that, Luke? That was cool. Very uncomfortable, <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> I wasn't joking earlier when I said that Luke knows how to shoot. This was a perfect spawn shot and I think that's pretty impressive for someone who hasn't had any experience with this rifle. And all that's left to do now is to climb up the rocks and to retrieve all the dassies we'd shot. Right, here's the dassie that rolled off from the top. Um, let's take a look where I hit him. I think I can feel the pellet here. I actually feel the pellet in his back. So I'm gonna have to dig that out and see what it looks like. Um, but there, that's why I hit him right there. I aimed a bit low because I thought the pellet might travel up, but it hit exactly where I aimed, right underneath his neck here. It would have gone straight through his body, through his spine, through his vitals and out his back. And as you'll see in the video, he dropped straight down. So yeah, and this is a decent sized dassie as well. Um, they usually have their, have their young around the end of the year. So this one would be minimum six months old. Um, probably even longer, than, probably even older than that. Right, let's go get the other, shall we? Just up on the top here. And then just 
I actually can't remember who shot what, but here's the here's the one. And it looks like this was oh. a headshot. perfect headshot. There's blood coming out coming out of his eye and out of his nose. It would have dropped straight down. Here's one. A big male. This is definitely not a baby. Yo, big one. Unfortunately with dusky hunting, one of the big drawbacks is that um, even if you get a really good headshot, they can fall down between the rocks where their, where their holes are and they're just so deep, the cracks are so thin, there's absolutely no way you're going to get them. So we only managed to pick up three out of the, the four that we shot um, on this rock over here. So we're missing one, but that's just the way it goes and I'm sure it won't go to waste. There's so many scavengers here, so many predators that I can bet you within the next few days it will be eaten. Cool, let's take these down and put them with the rest. Well, that's who we're going to call it today. Come in here, Anton. Cool. <laughs> that's who we're going to call it today. Um, the sun's starting to get low on the horizon now. It's starting to get quite cool. And we want to get home in time to actually skin one or two of these and get yeah. them ready for, for some food. Um, the, the workers on the farm here love to eat these so they know how to do it properly. Um, extremely happy with the day, with the way that the day has gone. It started with a, some with some overcast weather and some some rain last night. We weren't sure how it was going to work out, but um, ended up getting some some real long range dussies in the strong wind. Luke got a dussy from 144 meters, which is absolutely crazy. A bit of a bummer that we didn't get it through the scope cam, but 144 meters is insane. And then to finish off with these at this absolutely magical spot is awesome. Um, so thanks to Anton for showing us around. He lives on this farm, so he knows this, this place like the back of his hand. He knows exactly where the dusties are. And thanks to Luke for accompanying me and taking some good shots. How do you find it, Luke? Oh, it was lots of fun, especially to end off the day like this, to pull up to this nice patch of rocks and be able to get quite a few in a short space of time with an air gun. It did a great job. Really enjoyed it. And you nailed your last shot here, hey? Yeah, that was, that was great. Just very uncomfortable position but we made it happen we did it for the viewers and for to get the scope cam footage so yeah and luke will agree there's nothing like hearing the sound of a solid headshot and just seeing the, the dusty drop on the spot it's mm. the most satisfying thing ever it's like it's like shooting a kudu and, and watching it run 10 meters and drop just to know that there's no suffering involved at all just yeah. drop straight away we, we want to be ethical we don't want to we don't just come out here for sport and shoot them we want to be sure that the animal's not going to suffer it was a pity that we um, couldn't collect all of them because I, I do think that you should eat you should eat what you shoot, but um, you know we did our best, so I'm happy with that. Cool. Well, that's a wrap on this one. Um, I'll definitely be back here because this is honestly one of the most beautiful farms I've ever seen. The impact has done its job once again, so I couldn't be happier. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.